Human behavior has always been a mystery. Why do people do what they do? Why do they react one way when we expected something else? How do we learn to understand, connect with, enroll, engage, align with people most effectively? Hi, I'm Christine Cummerford, founder of Smart Tribes Institute, and welcome to our Smart Tribes Crack the Behavior Code podcast. In each episode, you'll learn practical, easy to use tools to better understand and change human behavior. These tools will help your team outperform, out engage, outsell the competition. In other words, to become a smart tribe. Oh, and you'll find these tools super helpful in your personal life too. Let's go. To increase your humanity at work, understand your five organismic rights. We all have rights as human beings, but if we don't know or acknowledge our fundamental rights, or if we don't understand them, we'll often suffer, cause others to suffer, and worst case, self-sabotage, which in turn sabotages those around us that count on us. So to live in a state of emotional agility, emotional resilience more consistently, we need to build the mental muscles of self-awareness. We need to crack our own behavioral code. And one of the best ways to increase our self-awareness is to get in touch with our organismic rights. Let's look at our rights as a human being. The psychoanalyst Wilhelm Reich observed a series of stages through which all human beings must pass on their way to full body maturation. And he referred to these as organismic rights. Now, organismic rights are our basic human rights that are established during our formative life experiences between approximately zero and three years old. They determine where a person will have behavioral struggles as they move through life. They govern our behavior and can hinder our performance. The tricky part is that we can be totally unaware of their existence. Imagine a newborn baby entering the world. This baby is forced to adapt quickly. The more fully developed a person's organismic rights are, the more that individual can express themselves with greater aliveness and creativity and spend more time in their smart state where creativity, innovation, emotional engagement reigns and less time in critter state where fight, flight, freeze, and high levels of stress reign. What are your five organismic rights? So every child, every organism is born with these rights to a greater or lesser extent. The right to exist, the right to have needs, the right to take action, the right to have consequences for one's actions, the right to love and be loved. Now, in a perfect world, every child would have these rights confirmed by the people around them as they grew and developed. But that doesn't always happen. Our parents, even with the best intentions and most loving parenting styles, could only give us what they had. And chances are pretty high that somewhere along the line, their organismic rights got a little wobbly. So most people struggle at least a little on a few of these. On the show page, you'll see an infographic that covers the five organismic rights, but I'm gonna go ahead and unpack them with you today. Now, this is based on my experience of working over 10,000 hours with humans at over 1,000 companies on changing their behavior. Note you can use this on yourself and you can use this with others too. For example, one of my coaching clients had a direct report that was struggling with accountability. So my client helped that direct report to increase their right to take action. Make sense? Another client had a partner that would often blame others for their shortcomings. The partner needed help increasing their own right to have consequences so they didn't have to blame others when their work didn't turn out as they had hoped. See how it works? So 
Let's first step through the org rights and then you're going to rate your own to exist. This right may be lacking when a person plays small, keeps their head down, tries to be invisible, becomes silent in times of conflict, or intellectualizes and is in their head often and doesn't actually feel. We can help them shift into smart state by acknowledging. So let's just say that this is you. You can acknowledge yourself, let yourself be seen, proactively communicate, intentionally take a role, take a seat at the table, be here now, right? Check in on how you feel. So rate yourself on a scale of zero to five and think about a statement of fact. I have a mobile phone, right? I have a refrigerator. Uh, that statement of fact would be high, right? Because you could tell that you were being honest with yourself because it's true, you have a refrigerator. So if you can say to yourself, I have the right to exist and it truly feels like you really show up, you really stay present, even when things are hairy, you have a voice, you use your voice, great, give yourself a higher score. This is between you and you. Next, the right to have needs. Now this may be lacking when a person frequently puts others' needs before their own, self-sacrifices, takes one for the team repeatedly, doesn't actually know what they want. We can help you or your colleagues shift into smart state by being present with and asking for what you need, letting people know what you can't do, setting healthy boundaries, saying no when you're tempted to overextend. So please rate yourself on your right to have needs. Zero, which is doesn't exist, five, which is the highest, whatever is true for you. Next, the right to take action. This may be lacking when a person often procrastinates, avoids commitment, is repeatedly late on deadlines. We can shift into smart state by getting an accountability partner, making sure you understand what success is, taking action and moving forward. Please rate yourself zero to five, where five is the highest, right to take action. Good. All right, next. The right to have consequences for your actions. Now, this may be lacking when a person often uses victim language, blames others for their own choices and actions, and avoids accountability. You can shift into smart state by thinking of how your choices impact others, considering potential outcomes, looking carefully at your role and what you create in life. Please rate yourself zero through five, where five is the highest. All right, last one, the right to love and be loved. Notice that this is a combo pack. Uh, many of us will find it easy to love, but what about being loved, receiving love? Check this out. So this right may be lacking when a person is uncomfortable giving affection, uncomfortable receiving affection, uncomfortable being hugged, uncomfortable being around their own or others deep hurt or deep emotion we can shift into smart state by asking for affection, reaching out to friends and family, staying present when others emote, and considering the benefits of compassion. Please rate yourself zero through five on the right to love and be loved. Now, consider your ratings. Where would you like to increase your rights? Think about when you get upset or triggered which right feels like it's not being honored? Where do you think your stakeholders at work stand? What causes the most conflict at work? How about at home? Which org rights aren't being honored or are minimal? Now revisit the infographic on the show page. How would you like to help yourself and others modify their behavior and increase their organismic rights. Bear in mind that we're not trying to blame anyone here. Humans are mostly just doing the best they can with what they've currently got. We're just wanting to understand ourselves a little better so that we know what we've got and can take some appropriate actions to strengthen our alignment with our own org rights. So when we can't say something is not okay, then our org rights are being threatened. 
it's okay and essential to claim your organismic rights to exist, to have needs, to take action, to have consequences for your actions, and to love and be loved. When we are told explicitly or implicitly that having any of these rights are not okay, then our entire humanity is being dismissed. Whoa, let's take a second and let that sink in. That's big, I'm gonna say that again. When we are told explicitly or implicitly that having any of these rights are not okay, then our entire humanity is being dismissed. Whoa, the net net. First, note where you have an opportunity to increase your organismic rights. Notice where you get triggered and which rights of yours are low in those situations. Then follow the infographic on the show page and work on increasing your org rights with your leadership coach, with your colleagues, with your friends and family. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Every listen, every share, every review helps others form their own smart tribes where teams are engaged, happy, and optimally performing. Together, you and I can help millions of people crack the behavior code in their organizations, families, and communities. I invite you to take two minutes and head over to smarttribesinstitute.com to discover more about how to form a smart tribe. See you there, and please tell your friends.